Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, let's talk some boxing. So, I just saw the Adrian Broner versus Adrian Granados fight. And I really enjoyed it. I really did. Um, this was, like I said, a tough one to call. It was a close fight. Broner pulled out the split decision. Uh, you could argue either way for either fighter winning that fight because it was a tit for tat. Granados did some excellent body work. Broner did some, some sharp body work when he did put in the body shots, but mostly he was counter-punching Granados for the most part. Granados was the guy who, for the most part, was the guy making the fight happen. He was the guy coming on the inside. He fought on the inside. He fought on the outside. He moved. He pressured. I mean, this this boy always impresses me, Adrian Granados. It's just that he just never gets the call. You know, He never gets the decisions in his fights, but... Um, he's an excellent and an excellent boxer. Um, in this fight, though, I gotta be honest with you. I said that Adrian Broner would get the decision, but Granados would possibly have won the fight. This fight was too close for me to say that Granados won the fight or Broner won the fight. I actually called this fight down the middle. This fight should be a draw. Uh, the guy to throw the last punch, I think, was Broner. Um, but by and large, it was a tit for tat. Granados would win a, a, a certain section of a round, then Broner would come back, then Granados would come back. You know, now if you want to really be serious, Granados did outwork Broner. He was the busier fighter. But in terms of uh, who was the more sharper puncher, who was the more accurate puncher, that was Broner. So if you're looking at percentage wise, in terms of who was landing more of their jabs, who was the guy who was more accurate, that would be Adrian Broner. Uh, if you were looking at the busier fighter, if you were looking at the guy who was, you know, landing that body work and, and wearing down his other opponent, and who was fighting whose fight, I think that if you look at this fight, I would say that Adrian Broner was fighting Granado's fight at certain points, but then he would come back and fight his Broner fight, right? He would walk Granado's down. But I think for the most part, this fight was more an Adrian Granado's fight than it was an Adrian Broner fight. So I, th I thought the fight, in terms of ring generalship, I thought Adrian Granados had that. In terms of defense, I thought that that's a toss-up. I mean, Granados got hit much more than Broner did, so I thought Broner got the defensive end there. In terms of effective aggression, <laughs> that's a tough one again, because uh, Broner was counterpunching very, very well. He was the more accurate counterpuncher. Granados was very effective with his pressure fighting. I mean, he got he would have Broner uncomfortable. He had him against the ropes. He was piling on punches to the body and to the head. Uh, he was constantly scoring on Broner. So, as to say that who was the more effective aggressor in this case, that's kind of hard to call. You could inch it to Granados. You could inch it to Broner. That's up to you, and that's why this split decision went the way of Broner. Um... I think that's I think that's the deciding factor in the whole thing. I think because when you look at the the the, the punch stats, the percentage of punches landed versus thrown, uh, Broner was the guy that threw less punches, but he did land more of his punches that he threw than Granados did. So he was, and his punches were much more powerful, much more you, you could you could see them. They were they were very clear for the judges. Uh, but Granados did land a lot of shots, a lot of good body work, a lot of clean body work. Some of the body work was caught by elbows by Broner, but Granados did do some good body work in there. He did some good, um, he did some good headshots as well as the lead rights, right counters, um, really good work, jabs to the pit. Um, remind me a little bit of what Sean Porter did to Broner. The only difference was that while Gr Broner did a better job of clinching up and locking up to stop the action uh, when he did it against Sean Porter, who had a somewhat similar but more crass style but yet sharper style than Granados. And I think Granados wasn't as sharp because he hadn't trained to be 147. He trained for the 140-pound uh, um, area. So they changed up a lot of things last minute on Granados, which is why he wasn't as sharp because Granados is a, a lot sharper a fighter. Now, some people were saying, well, why didn't Granados just pick apart Broner from the outside? Because Granados was doing that very effectively. Well, what happened was, as Granados started picking apart Broner from the outside, Broner made an adjustment 
and Broner changed up the angle so that Granados couldn't just pick, you know, sharpshoot him with the jab to the pit, couldn't just sharpshoot him from the outside with the lead right. So Broner started slipping and ducking those punches and also angling his body a certain way so he wouldn't get jabbed to the pit as regularly as he was trying to walk down Granados, who was boxing him from the outside, using lateral movement from the outside. So Granada started walking to him. And what Granados would usually do is he walked to you in the later parts of the rounds. So he would start walking down Broner. And he was very aggressive when he was walking down Broner. I mean, this dude was not playing around. And Broner made adjustments to that, which was also very good because the Broner against Sean Porter, I mean, Sean Porter was a sharper. He was a little bit quicker than Granados as well. Um, Broner was able to adjust to that style. And Granados had a very difficult style. Very difficult style. Um, Broner wanted to rematch with Maidana for that reason. Um, Granados has a very much similar style to Maidana, except, again, Granados, he's much more refined. Uh, he's more of a boxer than Maidana is. The only thing is, when it comes to sharpness and quickness, uh, Granados, he didn't have that quickness and sharpness I saw against Amiri Mom. And I think it's because of the weight change last minute. You know, to to, to, to to be a little bit bigger, so he wasn't as sharp. But um, hell of a fight, man. So in terms of my prediction, I don't, I wouldn't say that Granados clearly won this fight. I can easily see how this fight went to Granados, but I wouldn't say he clearly won. That would be a robbery if he clearly won and and, and Broner got the decision. Now this was a close fight. Uh, Granados usually has close fights with people, and I can see an argument for why Broner won. So I'm not going to do like if Broner didn't win this fight. I think he got a close decision. I think what they can do is they can have a rematch. Uh, if Broner was thinking about it, he could have a rematch somewhere down the road against Adrian Granados to settle this because this, this could set up a, a, a three-part uh, fight if Granados wins the rematch. So I think Granados gave a, a really decent proposal to Broner. I don't know if he will take it up or not, you know. But Adrian Granados is a tough, tough competitor. He's a tough, tough competitor. I've said it before. I thought this fight was going to be a, a good fight, and it really was. Oh, there's another criteria I forgot. So there's clean, effective punching. I think Broner got the clean, effective blows uh, in terms of very clear, clean, crisp, effective blows, which is why I think he got the split decision. So I'm not on the... My prediction was that Granados would win, but Broner would get the decision. Uh, from the judges, but in this case, I think Broner actually pulled this fight out. I thought he'd won, um, but I could easily see why the judge, I think his name was uh, Phil Rogers. I could see why Phil Rogers gave it to Granados because Granados was landing a lot of body shots on Broner, and he was succeeding in doing whatever he wanted to do. Granados threw the lead right. He was landing. Broner made an adjustment to the lead right. Granados was landing a left hook and then some combinations off the left hook. He was landing the jab early, and then he changed from landing the jab. He did something different because Broner adjust made an adjustment to that. So I could see why Phil Rogers would give the fight to Granados. Uh, it depends on what you you're looking for. And this fight was it had a lot of skill, um, very good boxers. We're talking about here facing one another. But you can see that Broner, he, he really has matured some in terms of his boxing skill. Still not a whole lot of footwork, but um, he makes adjustments. And with this particular style, this particular weight class, he was able to have just enough advantage so that you know he was able to uh, take advantage of certain spots where Granados was open. Um, but would, but would, would, would I say that Granados pulled this off? I thought he still pulled it off uh, in spite of the numbers that I just talked about uh, because I think Broner wasn't active enough. But then again, I'll have to look at the punch stats again. So I could say that Granados pulled it off, but it's, it's just really tricky to talk about this fight because you mean the styles did the styles did what they wanted to do. Granados did what he wanted to do. He fought his fight. Broner wanted, did what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it, which was counterpunch Granados. I thought that both fighters wore down each other in the final round. It wasn't just Granados breaking down Broner. You know, he did an excellent job of breaking him down. 
If this was to go 12 rounds, I think Granados would have won it much more clearly because he was breaking down Broner. But Granados himself also was tiring. So, a very interesting fight. Very interesting fight. But I just want to show you guys something. Granados got a surprise win against Amir Imam. Again, he stopped him. There was nothing he could do about that. They were trying to give Imam a chance. They stopped him. It's a style like Broner's. If he does not stop the fighter, he does not win the fight. It's just what it is. He didn't win against Adrian Broner. And, of course, you can argue that he won that fight. He didn't win against a guy called Brad Solomon, who was on the rise. He was the B-side, as usual. Um, he didn't win against Felix Diaz, the same Felix Diaz who lost to Lamont Peterson, I think it was, uh, a little later on. Okay. Uh, he never He got a draw against Kermit Sintra. Okay, this was a, a welterweight he got a draw. They would not give the guy the fight. They just wouldn't give him. I don't know why. I guess because he was uh, the B-side. The devastating Frankie Gomez, they didn't give him against Frankie Gomez. Of course, Gomez did knock him down. Uh, he got a draw against Leonardo Tyner. Uh, he got a specific decision lost that guy called Jose Juan Fuentes. So this guy's always been on the B side of things, and so he never really gets, anytime the fight's close, he just doesn't get the call his way, and it's what it is. Kid been fighting everybody and anybody he could get, but a lot of fighters don't really pick him to fight. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Carlos Molina. Carlos Molina is another Chicago uh, Mexican fighter who got mad boxing skills, outboxed Eris Nighty Lara. They gave him a draw. <laughs> Dude won the fight. He beat Julio Cesar Chavez outright. They gave him a draw. You know what I mean? Dude just couldn't get a break. And when he finally became world champion, uh, they waited until he they, he got deported back to Mexico where he couldn't train. And then they sent down uh, a canine to fight him. You know what I mean? Adrian Granados reminds me of this tough Chicago style. It's a pressure fighting style, but the pressure fighter can also box you on the outside, make you come get him. And they can mix it up. They can jab you from the outside. They can fight you mid-range. They can fight you on the inside. They can fight you off the back foot. They can fight you off the front foot. That's what I like about Adrian Granada's style. He can mix it up. He can do all kinds of different things. And the angles they get is just beautiful. And Adrian Granada showed that. He didn't have the speed that he normally has and the sharpness, but the boxing skills still there. So there's something about these Chicago fighters, man. Um, I think of Carlos Molina, underrated fighter. And unfortunately, Carlos Molina, he just cannot catch a break. He's, they, they deported him back to Mexico, called him a rapist or whatever. And dude just can't get a shot, you know what I mean? It is what it is. But these guys are usually, when a fighter has to face them, they say their style are ugly or whatever. They just don't want to face that style because that style is so difficult. It, it encompasses so many different things. And Granada showed that again. He gets hit a little bit more than Carlos Molina, though. Molina's a much better boxer, but it is what it is. On that note, you guys have a great one.